Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to AADL TV's Explore Your Michigan Backyard. I'm your host, Claire Watts, and we'll be guiding you through some of the wonders native to Michigan. This project is aimed to inspire individuals to get out and explore what our state has to offer. So let's get started. Crawling into this picture, we have some longhorned bees. They are enjoying this Rubecchia, commonly known as Black-Eyed Susan, which is a flower native to the state of Michigan. These plants attract pollinators such as butterflies and bees, as well as birds who feast on the plant's seed. Historically, this plant has been used for earaches, cuts, and scrapes. The bees are defined by their long antennae, with males typically having longer antennae. Pollen is gathered by females in this genus because they have hairs on their legs to help them with this, whereas males are only able to sip nectar. Next, we have the native plant called a toad lily. The naming for this plant comes from the spotting on the petals and leaves. Toad lilies add color and flair in late fall when most plants are wilting and preparing for winter. These flowers also serve as a crucial source of nectar for butterflies and hummingbirds migrating for the winter. Here, we find an image of a bear's head tooth fungus. This type of fungus primarily grows on taller portions of older trees and is not commonly found. Its distinct shaggy appearance is unique across other fungi, where it derives its genus name, Heresium, or toothed. It can also be distinguished as an edible fungi. Pictured is an image from a neighborhood lake in Saginaw, Michigan. A fun fact is that there are 11,000 lakes in Michigan and you are never more than a half hour away from a state park or campground. Make sure to get out and explore your community today. Resting here is a group of wild turkeys. These birds can be identified by their bald head with wattle, their fan tail, and their long legs, which in this picture, you can't see their long legs. Male turkeys, or toms, typically have a beard or seen in the left turkey on the fence. They also have some blue and red coloration on their wattles. The beard is a distinguishing feature as female turkeys, or hens, do not commonly have beards. Now we'll take a drive up to the Northern Lower Peninsula to this beautiful landscape where we find the spring melt at Petoskey State Park. Freshwater sand dunes are unique to the world with many of them presiding in Michigan. Petoskey State Park is home to Petoskey Stones, which is also Michigan's state fossil. Snowmelt is crucial for dispersing sediments, water and nutrients which then feed into rivers and streams, ultimately providing water for cities. If you can find the topic of this picture, it's a dagger moth using an excellent camouflage to hide itself from predators and viewers. Can you find the moth in under 30 seconds? The answer will be provided on the last slide. This cool pattern is actually a fungus called a bird's nest fungus. They are named because their cup or basket like shape and small circular eggs at the base of each cup. For this fungi, the dispersion of spores is unique as the eggs called the periodoles are bombarded with rain and shoot out of each cup or nest. These eggs then stick to animals and other living plants for dispersal and dry out to release their spores. Here, you can see the symbiotic relationship between a monarch butterfly and caterpillar with some common milkweed. This butterfly's life cycle is host specific to this plant as caterpillars feed solely on milkweed. They then pupate and become butterflies where they then drink nectar and lay their eggs. 
Key characteristics to identify milkweed include fuzzy leaves and milk excretions when injured or broken. As for the monarch butterfly, their bright orange coloring and spotting is a great way to identify this insect. It is also a good way to tell animals that this butterfly is poisonous. The toxins develop in the caterpillar by eating milkweed leaves. Coiled here is a common water snake with its prey. These reptiles inhabit any body of water and are quite skittish. Typically, these snakes feed on fish and amphibians and tend to eat larger frogs or salamanders based on the length of the snake. Water snakes may have many variations in color and are often confused for venomous cottonmouths, which do not live in Michigan. So if you typically see these and think that they're a cottonmouth, it's usually a water snake. Believe it or not, this picture perfect paradise is from Bay City State Park. This lovely view just shows how beautiful Lake Huron and all of our Great Lakes are. Did you know that more than 20% of the world's fresh water is within the Great Lakes? Not only that, but the state of Michigan has the most freshwater coastline of any state in the United States. Posing for this photograph is a female Eastern pond hawk. This species can be identified by its green coloration, black and green abdomen, and small brown ovals on the tip of its wings. Interestingly, the males of this species are a bright blue with a green face, but there are a few dragonflies in the region with the female's green coloring. Pond hawks are also known for catching and eating fairly large prey, sometimes even bigger than itself. Strutting into view is a black crowned night heron as he warily eyes the photographer. This species does not have a long neck like blue or green herons have and is identified by its stout figure, black cap, red eyes, and long white feathers on its head. In this picture, they're kind of hard to see the long white feathers on its head. Black crowned night herons are able to nest with water birds such as other herons and egrets and typically feed at night to avoid competition. This showy beauty is a great white trillium and is found throughout Michigan during mid to late spring. Typically, this flower is found in partially shaded forests where it covers the forest floor for an ethereal scene. It can be distinguished from other trilliums by its size and how the flower head is upright. See if you can spot this woodland beauty this spring. Crawling into our last picture is the common snapping turtle. This mother is laying her brood in some loose soil and gravel. The turtle eggs look similar to ping pong balls. Young turtles and eggs can fall prey to various predators, but once the turtles become larger, there are a few animals that prey on them. This reptile is an omnivore and will eat anything that fits in their mouth. Interestingly, it's estimated that these turtles can live up to 30 years in the wild. Well, thank you for watching. Hopefully you've learned a new fact or two today from this presentation and can capture some pictures like this on your next hike. Thanks for tuning into AADL TV. This display was created by Claire Watts and is possible through the Michigan Outdoor Writers Association.